Welcome back. The TCP IP network is limited to about 300 feet. If the distance between the IP device and the router is beyond 300 feet, we can add this POE standard to repeat the data network. In our last video, we do have the customer set up the 500 feet cable running. And he just need to add this POE standard at the middle, then he got the system running. Now we got another case from the customer. The cable is being buried under the ground. There's about 1,000 feet between them, so there's no way he can add this POE standard at the middle of this cable. Is there any solution? He can just repeat the data network without adding the POE standard at the middle of this cable. All right, now first let's move to the right and see what is the real situation he's dealing with now. The K6 Ethernet cable is being buried under the ground from the home to the warehouse. And the customer also has the POE switch set up at that warehouse so he can power three IP cameras there. And he just placed the MVR at home. The problem is there's about 1,000 feet between the home and the warehouse. And the customer didn't know the TCP IP network is limited to about 300 feet before he buried the cable under the ground. So now he's not getting any video from the MVR. The possible solution is he can dig up the cable and add the POE extender. Probably two. One POE standard can repeat about 300 feet, right? Remember? So there will be a lot of mess job to get up the cable up and just make the connection. Actually, there's another solution. He can have the 1,000 continue run between the home and the warehouse, but it need different equipment. Now let's move the workshop and how we can get his system wrapped up. This is the 1,000 continue run KFI Ethernet cable. We got two POE standards sitting both ends. These two PO standards are the key to achieve 1,000 continue run. There's three things to pay attention when we use this kind of system. The first thing is you need to flick the first PO standard. What's that supposed to mean? We got input and output. Usually the input will face to the PO switch, but now we need to flick. That means the output will face to the PO switch. And for the second PO standard, we don't need to flick anything. So inventory, we got input input, the two inputs are facing each other. And the next thing is about the port. We need to use the PoE port, not the uplink port. If we just connect the PoE standard to the non-PoE port, it will be not working. That makes sense, right? Because even the PoE MVR, the switch, doesn't need the power, but the whole system needs the power. So actually, the power is getting from this PoE switch. The last thing is we also need the PoE speeder at the end of the cable. PoE splitter. It will separate the both power and data. You may wonder why we need PoE splitter. This is the standard PoE solution. Before the PoE switch send the power to the PoE splitter or PoE standard, you need to classify and verify the attitude wise also support PoE. If we just remove this PoE splitter and connect the cable directly to the router, and the PoE switch will refuse to send the power because he knows the router doesn't need the power at all. That's the reason why we need a PoE splitter at the end of this cable to help the whole system to get the power up. All right, that's all for today's video. If you have any question about this system, please leave us a comment below.